Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's Appian Community Webinar. Today's Community Webinar will focus on Power Server 2019 and Power Builder C Sharp Web API integration. Why, when, and how? You will learn how to utilize the new features of Power Server 2019 in conjunction with Power Builder 2019 to free your apps from the desktop and from the limitations of a client server architecture. Today's community presenter is Marco Mioni, a longtime Power Builder developer and also an MVP. Before we turn it over to Marco, we wanted to point out that this is a volunteer based community presentation. As such, the views and opinions may not necessarily reflect those of Appian, and Appian has not reviewed this content for acquirers. All right, Marco, take it away. Good day, everyone. It's a really exciting time to be involved in Power Builder development at the moment. In fact, the new Power Builder 2019 C Sharp Web API opens up new possibilities. And this is especially true for the Power Server enthusiasts like me. Thereby, in this community webinar, I will be telling you how to integrate Power Server and the new C Sharp Web API. So, the agenda for today I will recap what Power Builder Edition you need to use. And in particular, what is the deployment architecture that you target with Power Server and the Web API? Then I will turn to the gist of this webcast, the reasons for integration between Power Server and the Web API. I will share all the architectural knowledge of the two solutions, why you need the first rather than the second one. I will discuss when you may want to favor Power Server instead of the Web API, with pros and cons. Then the how to comes discussing the implementation efforts and Power Builder objects available for the integration. I will then go through a number of integration examples based on personal experience so far, and discussing PowerScript versus C Sharp code and targeting also performance. And finally, I'll put everything into one demo and run it. Talk about me for a little bit. Power Server is my daily development framework. I have spent the majority of last 10 years in about hundreds of migration projects from two tiers Power Builder applications to three tiers web or mobile platform. I try to be an active Appian MVP in the Appian community Q&A and the webcast. I am also speaker at Elevate conferences in US and Power Builder user groups in Europe. But besides Power Builder, I've kept myself busy over the last five years with a PhD in machine learning techniques applied to big data infrastructures. Very cool stuff if you need to shred or mesh up some petabyte or even exabyte of raw data. As you already probably know, Power Builder is delivered in three editions. You may want to skip the standard edition if the goal is developing end tier solutions. The cloud edition offers all you need to develop ASP.NET Core Web API from the Power Builder IDE or from a brand new C Sharp IDE called Snap Develop. You can leverage .NET Data Access objects like .NET Data Store and .NET Model Store so that your technology shift from, from Power Builder data window to C Sharp REST services is simplified by automatic transformation tools. In addition to Snap Objects library, provides very simple, very powerful, and uh, very fast object relational mapping integration for .NET. The Universal Edition instead is what you need to enable the Power Server Toolkit in Power Builder and readily deploy your Power Builder desktop application to a middle tier as a web app or a native mobile app for iOS or for Android. Either Power Server and uh, C Sharp Web API enable your enterprise applications on top of an end tier architecture. They both let you build applications that are different from traditional legacy FAT clients by introducing a middle tier 
where entirely or partially your business logic is executed. This picture sketches the main tiers of the architecture. Each tier or layer has a precise purpose and does not have to be necessarily in the same physical machines. You can have a, a web server, application server and database in different machines. And you can even spread across multiple physical machines in a single tier. Enterprise application can draft or scale up the business logic to clusters of power server machines or REST API instances and offer load balancing and failover functionality. So to recap, both applications deployed to Power Server or embodying the new C-Sharp Web API are logically split across the client layer, the middle tier, and the data tier. But there are differences that I'm going to highlight in the slides to come. Let me start from the background and say why today the focus is on Power Server and Web API integration. First, a short reminder of how Power, Power Server works, or a quick explanation if you never tried it yet. So, from the native Power Builder source, Power Server generates N tier applications that can run on the web or on mobile environment. In the first case, you obtain, you see, identical FAT client user interface, which is made, however, of HTML and JavaScript plus a plugin that takes care of communications, uh, data handling, and security. If on the other side the target infrastructure is mobile, you can also access iOS and Android native features, but still programming in PowerScript because a set of additional Power Builder objects is provided by the IDE for things like uh, automatic UI resides, GPS, maps, camera, NFC, and so on and so forth, in a matter of few lines of Power Builder code. The application business logic, including data window and uh, transactions, data connectivity, and uh, PDF handling is deployed to Java or .NET backend. So there is no need to um, give up on uh, your Power Builder native functionality. From the partitioning point of view, the Power Builder application is exported to source code and objects in the PBL are split in order to build the presentation tier with graphical objects that are converted to web files that will reproduce the UI of the application. And as far as the business logic is concerned, Data holder and data container like data window will be replaced by J2E or .NET objects running on the server side, which are part of the Power Server implementation. Um, let me clarify that Power Builder MVO, being PowerScript, are converted into JavaScript classes too. So they are here in this part of the split. So if MVOs include embedded SQL, those are wrapped into server calls and transmit to the server objects. What you get in the end is an entire web rich application that lets you have complex functionality and advanced graphical interface with multiple windows, one on top of the other, like in a typical FAT client MDI application. Instead, a web API also knows as a RESTful API is an API that uses HTTP requests to get, put, post, and delete data. So a web API is based on a representational state transfer architecture, which is used in web services development. When the REST client accesses the, a REST service, it indeed accesses the resource, the actual data. Your REST client can be any regular Power Builder desktop application, or web or mobile apps via Power Server, or any other application developed in whatsoever language you want. On the server, it is the controller that handles the request and passes it on to the service, which in turn processes the request and prepares the response 
typically in JSON format. It is the content type of the response that informs the client what kind of a representation, and this is where the letter T of REST comes from, what is the kind of representation of the data. And the database is, of course, the usual backend where data is stored and it is accessed through data context and uh, uh, object relational mapping layer. In the future releases of Power Builder, Web API will embody a fundamental role. Most likely in uh, Power Builder 2021, you will be able to build desktop cloud applications powered by UWP, Universal Windows Platform, which is now open source in the, .NET, in, the .NET, in the .NET Core framework and REST API. So the app on the client will install an update over the internet and updates would be automatic and incremental. And the communication between the app and the server will be over REST Web API and HTTP. Basically, it is similar to modern desktop applications that are powered by cloud backend. Now, when would you go for Power Server or Web API, or rather both of them? So let me answer by a recap of pros and cons of both approaches before discussing the need for integration. Pros of Power Server are easy to figure out if you are legacy PB developers and need to provide a fast upgrade strategy to web or mobile platform. It's easy to interface Java or .NET Server objects if you use Power Server. It's a robust three-tier platform with hundreds of success stories over the last 15 years. You don't need to learn any new language, C Sharp, JavaScript, uh, .NET, HTML, just Power Builder. And uh, it delivers entirely the existing UI and business logic to web and mobile platform uh, through a super fast migration without any loss of functionality or performance. And uh, you write once and deploy anywhere. So you just keep one version of your source code and you can compile it as a desktop application, as a web app or as a mobile native app. And it's easy to develop apps for iOS, Android and using native functionality of the two operating systems. However, what are the cons? Power Server is a development, is a deployment, by the way, solution that shifts Power Builder applications to end tier architectures. With little effort, PowerScript goes web and mobile. However, the target applications leverage JavaScript. JavaScript can bring performance issues with heavy scripts or with too many round trips to database across the internet for a given operation in the Power Builder application. You know, this is fine on a local area network because uh, uh, these networks is so low latency, but on the internet, this is a big performance issue. So this said, you will argue that Power Server doesn't really separate out business logic from the client application. With Power Builder MVOs, that is your usually your business logic and embedded SQL that are still executed on the client side. And when the business logic gets very complex, there is a long list of historical hacks or workarounds for moving um, the business logic to middle tier or even to the database, like get self full state of the data windows, store procedures, SOAP web services, .NET assemblies implementations. Now, there is an alternative to use the C Sharp Web APIs instead of storage procedure or PowerScript refactoring to move those database server calls from client side to server side. The new Power Builder 2019 C Sharp Web API feature offers the perfect scenario for supplementing large Power Server enabled applications with full fledged .NET Core and C Sharp REST API. So the C Sharp Web API solves the problem 
of code that you don't want to be SQL based, but rather service based. So a great pros of uh, Web API is performance speed up. I will provide you later an actual comparison between pure Power Server and uh, Power Server Plus API. Another benefit of C Sharp Web APIs is, well, you don't have unsupported feature. Currently, there are some PB features that are not supported in Power Server because the underlying JavaScript. So by using C Sharp Web APIs, the developer doesn't need to work around or remove certain features. And related to this point, some customers complain about Power Builder itself and say, you know, its features is too limited compared to C Sharp. Well, now there is C Sharp Web API, the Power Server application can do even more features than original Power Builder app because C Sharp has more extensive feature set than Power Builder. Uh, aside from features, another key benefit of C Sharp Web API is to expose the application business logic to the world for integration purposes. It might be exposing to another app uh, developed by the same customer so they can share business logic between multiple applications. And it might be exposing to another app developed by, say, a third party so that the systems talk to each other and exchange information. And the last but not the least, with C Sharp, uh, you can C Sharp Web API, C Sharp Data Store, you can reuse most of the Power Builder data window handling functionality. What about Web API disadvantages? Of course, you need to learn C Sharp and .NET Core libraries. But this should be far from being a problem. Do not underestimate yourself and the fact that you are a developer, not just a Power Builder developer. The UI is not included in the package, in the sense that C Sharp Web API in Power Builder is a non-visual feature. That's why Power Server 2019 represents the easiest and the fastest solution for delivering the web or mobile UI to your project. Or if you want, just look out there, are, you will find lots of web UI frameworks, but it's not going to be as fast and um, as effective as Power Server, where you can stay with PowerScript and data window development. So to put everything in one recap picture, you should think of Power Server and C Sharp REST API integration, especially if you have already undergone Power Server migration efforts but want to transfer some heavy computation to the server. So the web API are implemented in C Sharp, but PB2019 and the new IDE Snap Develop 2019 provide lots of utilities specifically tailored to PB developers to simplify the plumbings. You can have Power Server and Web API on the same server box or on different instances. Web API is based on cross-platform.NET Core, Power Server can be deployed to both .NET, Framework, or Java servers. And then you can complement REST API and convert your application UI into a web or mobile app that consumes this API utilizing the new REST features of Power Server 2019. How do you actually make up this integration? Let's go technical now. So Power Server is actually little effort. Power Builder to Power Server is very easy. In Power Builder Universal, you get an additional toolkit, this toolbar over here, which lets you configure how and where the deploy of the Power Builder app is done to Power Server. In the picture, you see an example of Power Builder application and once the deployment is completed, each individual objects here, data window, MVOs, windows, etc., etc., have a corresponding object in, uh, in, uh, as, as a web files. So each individual object in the PBL become, becomes web file along with runtime features 
belonging to Power Server itself, of course. And these web files are stored on the server uh, web root. This is IIS, so 3W root, uh, INET pub 3W root. And these files are downloaded by the web browser or by the mobile client when the application starts the very first time. So very minimal conversion effort and fast learning curve. And here you see data windows and NVO have the equivalent file. Little deployment efforts, uh, you may find some unsupported feature, you may hit some performance issues, but usually there is always a workaround uh, to fix it up. When you migrate instead from PowerScript business logic to Web API, you need to learn how to structure your API. The picture shows on the left the business logic of the Power Builder application, while on the right the equivalent implementation in C Sharp. You have to convert data window, so from Power Builder data window to, for example, C Sharp data store. You need to convert Power Builder NVOs to correspondent C Sharp classes. You need to convert uh, transaction objects into proper data context. In one word, you must follow apps.net MVC and web, and web API specifications, where users interact with the controller up here, which manipulates the models down here, which updates the views, which is what is seen by the user. So with clients performing HTTP requests to get, to put, to post and delete data. Power Server and Web API coding is of course different. C Sharp is case sensitive, string are in double quotes, backslash escaped, and you have class methods for data conversion rather than system functions. You will, learn, you will also need to learn syntax difference in loops and conditions, but most of the attention goes to data handling with data store because uh, return code may be of different type, for example, set item, boolean instead of a number, or so error handle is not the same. And uh, the first row has index zero instead of one, likewise arrays and collection is sharp in C sharp, so be careful when you insert row or get and set items. But this is the way you learn the language, so it is just it just takes a learning curve. Once that your business logic is deployed as Web API, you can use the new REST features of Power Server 2019 to consume the REST services and have the Power Server application sending HTTP requests to get the data via the HTTP client object or have data window able to stream the content directly from a REST service returning JSON data. Of course, the JSON generator objects lets you lets your PowerScript client to store information in JSON format or parse it out if it is a JSON source. And in the next release, you can also use the built-in JSON import and export data window methods, as you can already do in desktop Power Builder application at the moment. There is a lot of materials on Appium community and Appium U to get started with Power Server and C Sharp Web API. So in my demo later and in the next example, I'm not gonna start again from the very basic uh, uh, implementation and technical um, stuff. So time to move to, uh, yeah, this is the links that you can follow if you want to get a quick start of Power Server and also very nice uh, uh, tutorial for Web API. So now it's time to move to Code Assets and see how to make Power Server and Web API working together. I will go through a number of use cases that you should make 
that should make you thinking of moving some portion of your business logic to Web API. So first one is handling of unsupported features in Power Server. Functionality in Power Builder for clients that cannot be migrated to Power Server or they may involve borderline solutions. With Web API, you can use .NET Core and, for instance, have a simple workaround to PBDOM, which is Power Builder extensions provided as a compiled library, so you cannot migrate it to Power Server. But you can easily re-implement the same functionality with C Sharp Web API. Another example is implement services like sending batch emails. Very, very useful in many enterprise applications today that needs to send out emails and notifications. Or, on top of everything else, has your complex BL that runs on a server and is available as a high performance REST services because it includes many round trips to the database, it fills a lot of memory structures, it is CPU or memory bound, and it needs data caching. High performance solution that run better on the server side than client machine. And last but not least, .NET Core is open source, cross-platform successor of .NET Framework and REST API is open standard. So first example, a web API that manipulates data using the C-Sharp data store. Okay, so this is a method in your class, in your web API. The method gets data store as an argument and uh, you export the data. You, 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 what you want to achieve in the end is to generate an XML out of this data store. using probably the link uh, package. So the, the .NET query language that generates data source independent queries. So C Sharp Data Store has an extensive API for manipulating JSON data. But besides that, so far you can only export data as a sequence of uh, comma separated strings. So this example calls export string here then split throughs by new line characters. And by the way, C Sharp has a very large set of effective functions and collections for in-memory data manipulation. It's not just array and structures like Power Builder. You later split by commas because you have a, a, a list of uh, comma separate values strings. So first of all, you split by new line, then you split each columns uh, by, by, by commas and, uh, and, uh, and create the XML by using the XML link objects to build XML elements and attributes that match the definition of the data store columns. So the customer name, department ID, and so on and so forth in my example. Ultimately, you save the root of the XML elements to disk. So here, to the right, in this picture, you see the content of a Power Builder data window, which becomes a C-sharp data store in your Web API project, and the XML output. Few lines of code and no need, no need at all for Power Builder DOM. So another very useful example uh, is when you can integrate your Power Server application with REST service for sending emails, talking to an SMTP server and send batch mail messages. In your web API, you can leverage the MailKit open source.NET Mail client library, which is based on uh, MimeKit for creating and parsing MIME messages. So the example here creates a MIME message, first of all, specifying usual sender, uh, recipient, and a subject. Then it builds the message body and specify attachment if needed. Then it configures the SMTP client with uh, security and server settings. And finally, it sends the message out. So as simple as that, while in Power Builder, or Power Server, we need to struggle with third-party libraries or wrap .NET assembly into convisible wrappers. So think about this solution. Now let me do something which will probably match more closely your existing complex 
data handling in, uh, in Power Server. I want to demonstrate the performance boost that you can achieve with Web API. So to this extent, I will refer to the Microsoft SQL Server AdventureWorks demo database, which among the others contains two tables, for sales order headers and order details. So I will mock up a, a, a model of, of a business logic that uh, for each order performs some type of operation that are usually known as performance killer in power server applications like uh, you know several round trips to the database um, dependent uh, server calls or uh, i will fill uh, memory structures or also string concatenation and replacement actually here i will focus on the first one uh, multiple round trips to database and um, code optimization is not the goal but you can agree with me that it is a typical use case that normally you cannot transfer to store procedure and these round trips cannot be optimized because they represent interrelated retrieves or updates by means, for example, uh, of data window retrieve at time n being necessary beforehand data window retrieve at time n plus 1 can be performed. So we will then actually compare performance in uh, Power BI the client server version of the application versus pure Power Server versus Power Server plus Web API. The Power BI application will be our baseline because it, of course, runs using the machine code, which is very efficient at code level. And database connection in client server is permanent, which allows for faster performance in local area network. But the converted Power Server application execute the JavaScript, which will be suffering of low latency or extra communications that is typical in entire architectures. So the Power Pillar code is in its fundamental shape like this. A loop over the retrieved sale order headers, so the master data window. Per each order, a cursor is declared for subsequent selection of detailed order information. And as I said, this is an implementation whose purpose is not discussing whether you can optimize data retrieve by some you know, SQL join, but rather it represents a typical scenario where per each master row, you need to do some operations. Can be calculation of monthly payrolls for all employees of your company, can be statistics on all history cases in a hospital, or like in this case, total incomes for all items of all orders in a given period of time. So the fetch here, uh, the fetch line gets the sale order detail data and in the cursor loop here, the amount variable, this variable uh, gets updated at each, at each iteration to signify some, uh, you know, some calculation that occurs per each line, per each step of the cursor loop. This is the equivalent code in C-Sharp Web API. You can use the Snap Objects library, which provides very simple and fast uh, ORM integration for .NET. We start again from uh, the sale headers retrieval, then we declare a collection of order detail data model, where sales order detail data type is automatically generated by the Power Builder C-Sharp model generator from a data window object. The SQL builder here constructs SQL statements programmatically and uh, in a database agnostic way. Here we actually use SQL query builder because we need an object to build a SQL select statement. With this SQL builder, you only need to build a syntax structure and database specific SQL statements will be generated based on the syntax structure in the data context. That is, in this case, you select uh, a list of, uh, of, uh, of columns or relevant fields from the sales or the details uh, and uh, where the order ID matches the given input value 
So SQL Builder is a very handy feature in Web API. It removes the headache of mastering the SQL statements for various you know, database types. Within the loop, then, what happens? Uh, the SQL executor executes the select prepared by the builder. And for each order detail, into the order details uh, collection, we can update our total amount by adding quantity times unit price minus discount per each item. Okay, so that's the equivalent implementation in C-Sharp for your PowerScript cursor-based business logic. All in all, we come up with this benchmark. The plot shows number of seconds to compute the total cost versus number of orders retrieved from the database. And we execute the, the code from the previous slide in Power Builder Client Server, in uh, Power Server, and finally in Power Server Web with order handling moved to C Sharp Web API. So, and also we execute the code in 10 rounds each time increasing the number of total orders by a thousand. So we start from 4,000 orders, 5,000, 6,000, up to 13,000. Baseline is Power Builder Client Server. Pure Power Server, the green line, is not going to scale up because business logic is delivered to the client and there are too many round trips to execute interrelated server calls. By moving the business logic to c Web API, we get back the maximum performance, so the red line. And we serve the data from an open standard architecture on top of the internet protocol, cross-platform implementation, and room for scalability, otherwise not possible with uh, Power Server uh, application. Think about these results and imagine how you can effectively transform your business logic in from PowerScript uh, deploy to Power Server into something which is high efficient cloud-based scenario. Okay, last example before moving to hands-on is data caching, which may help you out to even beat fat client performance. Say you want to implement your own data caching because there are data store holding rows that are not meant to change frequently and you may hold them into server memory instead of performing database retrieve at each request. So for simplicity here, we declare a session data class that contains a generic data store object and a timestamp for refreshing purpose. The data store cache class declares a dictionary, um, one among many collection classes that are available in C Sharp, while you do not have these data structures, by the way, in Power Builder. So the dictionary is made of a key, a string that it identifies the web session for which you want to cache the data store and the data store itself. And this class has a retrieve method here, which takes the data object name and retrieval arguments, if, that, if any. Try get value looks up in the dictionary if there is a data store for the given session ID. If no result, the data store is initialized with typical Power Builder syntax, new data store, data object name, and the data context, the equivalent of the transaction object. The newly created data store is thereby added to the cache and retrieve is executed here according to the number of arguments that are provided. So no arguments, just retrieve. One argument, retrieve, argument zero, and so on and so forth. And finally, the data store is returned to the client, either if cached or just retrieved. And in addition to that, you may want to have a look at the dependence injection features and how to scope your cache service. c -sharp provides three methods, are scoped, uses a factory provided by the dependency injection container to inject a, a dependency that is reused over the entire session. A transient uh, provides a new instance of the class per each request and add singleton is for one instance throughout the service lifetime. 
So if this cache example, in this cache example, I just discussed, uh, I've used add scoped. Very good. Now it's time to move to the demo. All right, the first example is the deployment to Power Server of Power Builder as client object functionality. So I'm going to start from the new C Sharp IDE, Snap Develop, and here I have my web API, uh, the project that follows the usual structure, controller, service, and, and models. Um, I have a SQL Server data context that is used in the service class to access the database and the service class manipulates data from the department tables in the AdventureWorks uh, demo database. For example, let's take uh, the retrieve, the retrieve method, which creates a new instance of uh, uh, C-sharp data store. It sets the data object created by the C-sharp model generator in the Power Builder ID and retrieves it. Then the data store is returned to the controller class. So here is the department controller and the code related to the retrieve method. The controller class answer in this case to the HTTP GET request and returns a string. The JSON, which, which is the JSON export of um, data store filled by the service. Okay, data store export plain JSON. You can see the HTTP route here. It is server name, uh, then slash API, slash controller name, and slash retrieve. All right, then Power Builder. And uh, so I have a very simple uh, user interface. This is what I'm going to use in my client application, in my Power Server client application. So in the Power Builder ID, I have several buttons. Let's have a look at the retrieve. I use the REST object. So the REST client object, also the HTTP client object I can use. So in the retrieve, um, I call the web API and, uh, and load the JSON into the data window of control. So you can preview the results of the web API uh, from, the web, from the web browser paste slash retrieve and uh, this is the JSON data. So at this point, let me deploy and run this Power Builder client to Power Server. So Power Server is already installed on the local IIS server. A local deployment profile adventure is already configured and I deploy the app and run it. During the deployment, the code is exported and web files are created and transferred to the web server. So the deployment actually takes uh, three steps. At the end, I can run it. You see, in a matter of a second, I will run uh, my PB application into the web browser and uh, I get the UI from within Internet Explorer. I can select the button and call the web API. So the process of parsing the JSON is automatic. The REST client object matches the data window of columns with the JSON keys and fills the data window accordingly. Here I see the columns and also I have a text box to display the response body so the actual uh, uh, JSON data and the response header. So extremely easy. Okay, now the second example is the complex business logic, which has the goal to compare performance between pure Power Server application and Power Server in conjunction with Web API. So it is the same Web API project. Let's take another service class, which somewhere down here um, retrieves another uh, C-sharp data store containing list of some thousand sales order. Then it uses the SQL builder to actually construct the SQL query to select all order details for current order number. Execution of this query is done through the SQL executor, which fills a collection of sales order detail model class. And finally, 
for each order detail into the detail the orders collection uh, some mathematics is done and finally the amount is returned to uh, the controller which sends it back to the web client web client which is again power builder um, and it is deployed to power server so our um, client application this time has two buttons the first one executes regular database uh, code so it's this one example we have seen in the presentation with the data store retrieve and per each order we get the order id we declare the, car the cursor on corresponding detail orders loop over the cursor and make calculation with the performance killer one server call per each row in sales details second button is web api so http client object which sends http get request to the controller entry point for our service method which also takes an argument here uh, that is the maximum order number this is for retrieving at each round uh, thousand more orders every time uh, to speed up a little bit the test we do only one round not 10 rounds as in the performance plot from the slideshow so let's deploy again the client application to uh, power server and we run it so it's completed we run The UI will show up. Okay, that's the window. So first button with performance killer calculation on top of a couple of thousand orders with the SQL cursor. Okay, it's gonna take some times and uh, eventually it finishes and it output will say that run one took some tenths of a second and will also display the total amount of USD in the sales orders. There you go. So 39 seconds and some uh, 11 million USD. Second button, the web API. It takes uh, seven seconds and uh, same results. So this is why I am so excited by the web API. I can truly complement the power of Power Server and the web or mobile deployment with complex business logic deployed to the server side instead of being converted to client side JavaScript. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, I hope I made you understand how Power Server and Web API are not like either one or the other but rather two solutions of a kind and you can combine them together in order to get the best from each one in the same entire or cloud uh, infrastructure. So stay connected with the Appium community at community appion.com there you will find q a as well as articles and technical videos follow up and roadmap on social networks and eventually also share your material thank you very much for your attention